Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So great to have you on the Zoom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> You gave one of my favorite performances on the show, and I'm really not just saying that. Wow, that's really nice. Thank you. Y yeah, your your character just has a real, you know, quiet energy about her. Like, the performance was so understated and just beautiful. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And, you know, she's not loud. She's not in the rock and roll scene or given these showy scenes yet. Yeah, your performance is such a standout. Oh, thank you. Yeah, she's definitely the more quiet of the bunch, but I, I think she's like a secret killer, you know. She is. I love that, a secret killer. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think she's like, she creeps up on you and you're like, whoa, I didn't know that she was going to steal my heart and make me cry. Boy, did she make us cry. <laughs> yes, yes. She makes me cry. I cry. Yeah, I mean, your character is really on the outside looking into this huge machine that's going on um, away from her and sometimes around her. She has like this window into the Daisy and Billy relationship. Is that what, you know, really attracted you to the role, given like her position in proximity to the band? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that attracted me to the role. At first, it started with the book, um, because I don't believe that you can tell a great story without great writing and great content. So the material on its own was like really, um, the material on its own was was really um, spectacular and juicy and like had all the things that you want in a storyline. And on top of that, it was written in 1970s. And it takes place in LA where I'm born and raised. And so like, you know, kind of the most iconic moment in, in California music history. And, you know, then it had the love triangle between Daisy, Billy and Camilla. And then you had the clothes and, and it just like, it just had every element of, you know, juicy, but also really uh, meaningful and, and fun and exciting and also really challenging. And also I knew that I was going to, I didn't realize at the time how much I was going to kind of grow up with this character because I didn't realize that we, it would take us, you know, three years, the whole process. But um, I grew up with Camilla in a lot of ways and, and she taught me kind of how to be a young woman, or at least I aspire to be like her. Wow, three years. That's a pretty long time to stay with a character, or at least stay with the yeah. character in your head and thinking like them and all of that. How was that whole experience? I know you just mentioned her teaching you like the grown up lessons and stuff. Yeah, I think that, I don't know, it kind of just like marinated with me. You know, I also was coming of age and, and am coming uh, of age and into kind of my like adulthood and my womanhood. And Camilla is kind of thrust into that very, very early on because she gets married and she has a kid and she leaves her family. And so she kind of has to grow up faster than perhaps her peers and perhaps faster than she's ready. And, and I do relate to that in a lot of ways in my life. I've been working for a really long time um and just being an actor and and you know kind of having to be responsible a young responsible adult and um yeah she just kind of taught me a, a a trust your gut trust your instinct but don't take shit from anyone kind of mentality which is a great mentality to have as a woman yeah yes <laughs> any era yes i agree and as far as, you know, there's obvious comparisons to the band, to Fleetwood Mac. We've seen all the TikToks in the world. Um, and obviously this is based on the book, but I'm wondering in your own research and development, did you really look to iconic figures of wives of musicians when you were thinking about who she is? I didn't look at wives of musicians because I just always, you know, her story is all like the base of, of this character and her story is, is is written so well in the book that I had enough to kind of d deep dive in on the book. But what I did do was kind of the essence of the, just the women back then, and especially kind of women in the music scene and, and women alongside the music scene and kind of just how chill and cool and laid back they were. And I think, you know, a woman that hangs out with a lot of boys and men, you know, has to have a certain kind of like laid back, go with the flow um cool girl miss to her and and I think that 
especially in those early episodes when Camilla is is traveling across the country with the band like she is one of the boys and she is one of the band members and she's able to hold her own with a bunch of teenage dudes and and I think that yeah I pulled a lot of references um a lot watch a lot of documentaries I watched a lot of interviews um I loved Allie McGraw for this character. I kind of loved her in, in Love Story and I felt that she had a similar essence, but they were there was a lot of women that I that I pulled from and then also just the content in the book was just was really helpful too. And it's such a nuanced portrayal too when you think about it, you know, viewers have to believe that in any minute she can walk away from Billy, but that she has like a thousand reasons to stay as well. So how was it to play into that arc? I think she's got a thousand reasons to leave and one to stay. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like that Lady Gaga song about having a million reasons. Um, you know, I think the interesting part is that there are so many reasons that someone could look at her and say, just leave him, you know, just leave. And I think it's more interesting to, to see her reasoning about why to stay and why this is worth fighting for. And I think that perhaps the easier way out would have been to just leave. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that Camilla doesn't want the easy way out. I think that she wants the rewarding work that come the reward that comes from a loving, difficult, complicated, long term partnership. And I think that she believes in this man like inherently and in, in her bones, believes in his talent, believes in him as a father, believes in him as a man. And she just sees all that he's capable of. So she's able to to really push him to places and ultimately he does you know become the man that that she always knew he was you're playing with such a span of time between these two characters how was it to develop that the span of time was difficult um i had a easier time playing young camilla just because it's it was tricky also with, you know, knowing that she was dying and she was, you know, had cancer and kind of adding that flavor and element, but that couldn't be the whole story because then we would give it away super early on for the people that didn't read the book. And I just, it just brought so much to me, Cammie, to play a character who's looking back on her life, a girl who's, you know, kind of my age and and how will I be feeling, you know, in 30 years telling this story of what's happening to me right now in my life? And I think that the ability to say, yeah, I would have done some things differently, but overall, I'm happy with my choices, you know, even though they didn't always lead to the best, you know, best results and best decisions to just kind of have an overall peace with your life. And in those earlier scenes, like you were saying before, you know, she really was one of the guys. She was on the road with them. Um, and I had heard in other interviews that the band really had time to connect with each other and bond. So I was wondering, what was that experience like for you? Well, when you're on set, they all had a lot more time together than me because they all had band camp and band practice. So I was the only one that was excluded from band camp. But there is such a natural camaraderie between all of us. Um, Anytime that we would be filming those scenes, you know, like when we're driving across the country and, and it's early on with me and the boys, it was just like summer camp and teasing each other and just having fun. I mean, like acting is such a serious, challenging, hard job sometimes and to have people who are your friends and, and you have to have this chemistry on screen so that you're <laughs> and you're building it in real life and it's happening so naturally. And I think that that's something that I feel really proud of when people feel like you know, that really looked like a real band and we looked like we were family. I think that's like, you know, we feel really feel like we, we achieved what we wanted to get across. Yeah, it was so authentic. And even speaking to the fashion and the looks of the 60s and 70s, like not to take away from the styling on the show, but you just look naturally like you came out of that era of time. Well, um, I kind of, I mean, you can see, I kind of have like- Yeah, you do. I have Camilla- essence I mean it wasn't too far when I stepped into the audition I think it was not too far than how I ended up on set all those years later because there was definitely an essence to me which which I could I felt related to her a lot so do you feel tethered to that era or the icons of that day I felt tethered to Camilla um I felt I mean I, I am born and raised in California you know sure, it's, it's a vibe 
Floral Canyon. It's definitely a Cali vibe. I'm barefoot right now on my interviews. Like there's definitely like um um a nature girl essence and 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 kind of just a little bit more of like a laid back vibe of us of us California girls. But I think that I just felt connected to a woman who is scared, who's confused, who's becoming a woman maybe faster and earlier than she predicted. And a woman who's just trying to juggle the things that life is throwing at her when it all feels really new and scary and overwhelming. And I think that that was what I just really kind of grasped and, and held on to. Mm -hmm. And those last three episodes are an emotional whirlwind. Yeah. Um, it was incredible as a viewing experience. So I can't even imagine what it was like to film that. No, it was hard. I mean, we were at the end of episode 10, like, you know, I had just shot all of those really big emotional scenes in episode 10. And then I stayed an extra day to shoot all the interview stuff, all the old age stuff. And then I was like, at the end of that, I was like, I'm like emotional mess. I need to go home. <laughs> I condensed all of the hardest scenes into like the last couple of weeks of filming. So it was, it was really, you know, ex emotionally exhausting, but also therapeutic. And, and really rewarding um, to see the way that everyone's performance in episode 10 has really touched people. And it was really nice to get that slice of life um, in terms of what their future looked like. It wasn't turmoil. They like got to a, a center of like peace and happiness. Mm -hmm. um, that was such a great thing to be able to see because usually when something ends, it ends and you don't get to, well, what is their happy, you know, ending look like, you know, you don't usually get that, but you do with these two characters. Yeah, and it's a happy ending, complicated. She's also letting him go be with the other woman that was the other woman for a long time. So it's just like, life doesn't stop throwing curveballs, you know, and, and it doesn't really get easier or less complicated. But I think if you follow the path that, you know, Camilla so strongly believes in, which is just, you know, do whatever is best for everybody and that humans are like incredibly complicated and just not taking it personal. I think Camilla's really great at kind of compartmentalizing um, what somebody's needs are versus, you know, what, how it feels. And there was a whole fan base already baked into the show because of the book. But then there are viewers like me who hadn't read the book and who was heartbroken when they found out how it actually well, ended. They're my favorite kind of viewers because I, I will always be like, did you read the book? And they're like, no. And I'm like, oh, you're in for a treat in episode yeah. two. Like you are going to be surprised. So I always like those um, audience members a little extra because I get to be like, were you surprised? Julia is my daughter. I was not prepared at all <laughs> for any of, right. of it. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of preparedness, unprepared. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it seems like in your career, it was kind of leading up to this television series. So I'm wondering, especially since you really spent three years on it. Um, so for you, what's next? Right now, um you know, I'm just trying to, I went on to do two other films after uh, we wrapped Daisy Jones and they're coming out this year and they're films that I'm really proud of. So I'll get to promote those for a little bit. And then I don't know. I mean, I've been really spoiled in that I've worked with people I really like, doing jobs that I really like, doing characters that I really want to play and really want to learn from and really want to grow from. So kind of, you know, after Daisy, the, the bar is set really high on, on experiences, you know, um, but I'm, I'm just reading scripts and meeting people and reading books and trying to figure out, you know, what's next for me. Well, Cammie, thank you so much for taking out the time. This was so enjoyable. Thank you. I'm so happy you, you liked it. I loved it. And like I said, I had no idea what I was in store for. That is my favorite kind of response. <laughs>